My name is Stephen Box. I'm the Director of Outreach and Communications for the Department of Neighborhood Empowerment. And I'd like to uh, welcome you here to amplify your clout. And so we're going to talk about some strategies for, I don't know, amplifying your clout. Good title, huh? <laughs> so imagine, if you will, a world without numbers. Can you imagine showing up for work? and uh, not knowing really how long you're supposed to work and how you'd measure your performance and how you're going to get paid and when you can go home. And then when it's time to get your paycheck, you get an envelope saying, thank you very much. And then it's time to pay the mortgage, so you send them a, a note saying, thank you very much, not knowing how much you have and how much you owe and where you stand. Then you get a bank statement that says, not doing so good. And you get in your car, and you don't know how much gas you have or how much you know, can you imagine living in a world where we don't have numbers and are unable to figure out where we stand? It'd be crazy. When things matter to you, you want to know exactly. You're a small business person. You're not punching a clock, but you're forging relationships with clients, and you want to know what exactly do you expect from me? What exactly am I going to get in return? How will I know when the work is done, when I've delivered, when I can expect to get paid? so that I can move on and have a great life and enjoy the benefits of my labor. I mean, when it matters to you, you want to measure it. And so we live in a city that's led by a mayor who's grabbing a hold of the fact that if we're going to improve as a great city, we're going to have to measure our performance. So department by department by department, he's going to the departments and saying, what do you do? Like, what do you do? I mean, that's not a bad question. What do you do? In life, that's not a bad question to ask yourself every day. What do I do? What, what's my purpose today? How can I do better? And how do I measure my performance? Because if I'm doing something and it's not working, I'd like to know. And if I'm doing something and it's working, I'd like to double down on that. So the, the, the mayor, did you all see the opening session? So the mayor has implemented the performance management uh, unit in the city of LA. And we're measuring everything. And you have access to this data, so you can find out how is your street. Emotionally, you may have an opinion, but really, where does it rate? Where's the asphalt going? How's the city doing, and can we do better? So we're measuring everything from streets and parks. Um, and a, a department performances. And one of the departments in the city of LA is you, the neighborhood councils. The city charter defined your role as neighborhood council members. And it's to... Promote more citizen part participation in government. Hey, how are we doing? Yay. Promoting is a weird word. I mean, yay. Like, how do we measure that? Yay, I was really loud. I'm a great cheerleader. I was promoting. Promoting more citizen participation in government. Well, we, we could probably figure some sort of metric for that. And the other thing is to make government more responsive to local needs. Maybe there's a metric for that. The bottom line is if, as neighborhood councils, we're going to measure our performance, we're going to need to come up with some metrics so we can ask the hard question, which is, what do we do? How can we do better? And how do we measure our performance? So I assure you that uh, I, I just want to drive this point home. If it matters, measure it. Okay. If you'd like to improve it, you need a baseline. You need to know how you're doing. So we're going to look for some opportunities to measure what we're doing. Okay. Um, as neighborhood council folks, what outreach tools are you using to connect with your community? What's that? You got a website? Yeah. MailChimp? Constant contact. Constant contact. So we've got some, e some newsletters going out. Twitter. Twitter. Oh, yeah. Tweeting away. Going to see some great comments. Facebook? Yes? Huh? Uh, what? Eventbrite. Eventbrite. What else? Events. Events. Actual events, actually talking to people. Don't get, don't get crazy on us here. <laughs> so events, yes, and then you want to invite people to the events. You want to promote the events. You'll probably start using some digital tools. Never get away from the fact that face-to-face -face contact is the essence of all that we do. So we, we follow people we trust. And often that is the result of a face-to-face -face contact. But often the introduction comes digitally. And I become aware of you, and eventually our paths cross. And it's supported by an, an, uh, uh, digital tools. Any other tools you're using for outreach? Huh? 
Blogs. Excellent. Phone calls. Yep. Yeah. Excellent. Door to door. Newsletters. Paper newsletters. So you need a mailing list. All right. So we've we've talked about a lot of different tools for outreach. Now, how do we measure the success of a website? Hits, views, forwards. How do you measure success on Facebook? Likes. Oh, thank you for liking me. Yes. Yes. What else? Huh? Shares. Thank you for sharing. What else? Interaction. Excellent. And how would you interact? By responses. Thank you for commenting. That's so excellent. I got three comments. Oh. So uh, Saul, who's worked on the uh, digital journalism, journalism platform, can tell you that getting the comments is everything. The clicks, the forwards, the views, the comments. There's nothing better than grabbing a hold of, con of, a, of a topic that starts a conversation. Regardless of the importance, I just got all these comments. So you've gotten some people engaged in the process. How do we uh, track Twitter? Retweets. Favorites. Number of followers. Um, direct people going back and forth. So there's uh, Mailchimp. How do we track? How do we track our success on Mailchimp or Constant Contact? Hmm? Opens. So we sent out tens of thousands. Three of them got opened. One got forwarded. Two unsubscribed. But there's a way to track, and you can go in there and you can grind the data a bit. Um, but for every platform, there's a, a way to track your performance. It's starting to get crazy already. I mean, I was late getting the newsletter ready. I got it out. I got it onto the Facebook. I tweeted it. I stayed up late. I started grinding all of the data to prepare for the meeting so I can give my report. But the bottom line is you can fatigue yourself just trying to track what's going on because it's platform after platform after platform after platform. So as I said, we live in a city where uh, the mayor has directed neighborhood councils, the department, departments in general, to start being very specific about what they do, how they can do better, and how we measure it. So as the outreach and communications director, every week I report in on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, Ustream. You know, I just report. Is it going up or down? I mean, ideally, things should go up with the exception of my weight, which is supposed to be going down. <laughs> I guess golf scores go down, bowling goes up. But the thing is, there should be some movement. You should be making progress. And so we report, oh, look, you know, we sent a bunch of new, uh, newsletters. I can tell you what, they op what people open and what they don't open. Um, but we're obligated in many cases to get the news out there. So I can tell you that we get it out there, and sometimes people don't want to read about this, but they love to read about that. That's good to know. So how many opens, how many forwards, how many shares? But at the end of the day, oh my goodness, I could kill a meeting starting to report on stuff like this, right? And how many have ever been to the meeting where the, let's go through the budget line by line. Woo! How'd I lose the room? What happened? Where'd everyone go? It's just a few digits. So there's one number we share. It's called our clout score. And uh, on July 24th, it was 24. What is it now? Huh? I think it's 50 today. No, oh, it was 47. So it's um, and it's 50 days. So we do website metrics, we do page views, we do we track Nextdoor also. We're up at 60. We're over 60,000 members right now, by the way, on Nextdoor. We're at about a thousand neighborhoods. There's about 60,000 people that have opted in. Neighborhood councils can communicate with them. So we're looking for ways to find more people and more data that you can use to connect with. Now it's up to us to, to figure out a way to connect with them. Anyway, but at the end of the day, just like I'm losing you now by going through these numbers, <laughs> our clout's 47, it's 50 today. And what that means is on a scale of 1 to 100, 100 being really good, and 1 being, I guess a hermit would be, a hermit in Buell, Idaho, uh, would be a 1. We're a 50 today. Um, so Barack Obama, who's heard of him? 
He's not on a neighborhood council either, but we're trying to get him, just like you. But he's a 99, which is pretty good. He wasn't able to make it today, but if he was here, we'd get him to 100. I would help him. But he's a, he's a 99. Now, the LA Times is a 99. There's many ways to uh, have an impressive clout score. What it demonstrates is that you resonate. If you make a lot of noise amongst your friends and family, they already know what you're saying. They already know the same things. You, you haven't resonated or changed the world. You haven't caused any ripples in the pond. But if you have a, a solid group that trusts you and they then pass it on, you'll hit other networks. And eventually, if these networks trust you, you start to become a resonator, a pollinator, a communicator. And you might have different personalities. Some folks are inspirational. Oh my goodness, every day they have something inspirational to say. Someone else might be the activist calling us to action. Every day, here's another petition to sign. But if I follow and participate with the people I trust, someone else is just having a great life. Eli's all the time, look what I'm having for dinner. Makes me hungry just following Eli. But the thing is, <laughs> makes me want to follow Eli because he knows what's going on. So the clout score aggregates your impact on the community. And keep in mind, you don't even have to be the one making the noise. It could be folks talking about you. So I don't think that Barack Obama sits up late at night tweeting the business of the United States of America. But I do think the United States of America is busy talking about what's going on. And that's why he's an influencer with a 99. So uh, the Huffington Post teen, anyone here reading that? Saul, just you and I, I guess, <laughs> is a 59. LA Times is 99. Eric Garcetti, 69, huh? That's in the top couple of percent. 65 is about the break point for the top 5%. 62, I think. If you, you, tweet your questions. Uh, no, no, tweet your questions. Come on now. Really? We got, yeah. Oh, yeah. He'll help you. This guy's, <laughs> this guy's a, a madman. Ron Galperin, you met Ron today. Uh, the city council, uh, the controller is a 46. Mike Fuhrer is a 46. So we got a tie going on with the two citywides. 46 and 46. And Power LA was a 49. This was yesterday. I hope we're 50. I, I bragged about it. Uh, so I guess we were 49 yesterday when we made this slide. Stephen Box, that's me. So if you'd follow me, it's Stephen M. Box. I'm a 57. Silver Lake Neighborhood Council. How many of you are following other neighborhood councils? Teacher's hat's right over here. Um, so if you're following other neighbor councils and neighbor councils are retweeting the things that are important to you and helping you stir that conversation, it helps everybody's clout score go up. So there's Silver Lake Neighbor Council. And Silver Lake Neighbor Council is kind of cool because they have a policy in place so that it's clear about how they communicate and who does the communicating. So they have a standard for um, uh, Neighborhood council issues by default automatically get tweeted and Facebooked and shared. And uh, news in the neighborhood of a certain, like not garage sales, but and not lost dogs. But if there are events in the neighborhood that for nonprofits and other community based organizations, it's an automatic. The president is the one that works with the webmaster. Who's got access to the social media accounts? Everything's anchored in a non personal um, email account. So we're, let's talk about a, a few ways to. Um, Hey, does anybody uh, know about the origins of tweet, uh, Twitter? You do? It's been around for hundreds of years. <laughs> Did you know that? Did you know that? I wasn't aware. You're not aware of that, huh? You know, there was a time when the original tweet was on the pipes <laughs> or on the drums, and it would be a short burst of noise, and then the men would go to war. That's how they were called to war. I mean, if you think about it, a short message with a very specific call to action. I mean, that's the essence of Twitter, right? The uh, Irish uh, women would use trash can lids to tweet out messages. And it was usually the British are coming, so all the men should disappear because they're looking for the IRA and they're going to arrest any man in the, in the neighborhood. And that was, the, uh, and that was a, a form of Twitter, sending a message with a call to action. So no offense to those that love to tweet their lovely dinner. But I mean, the real opportunity for us is to include some calls to action, to give people some sort of opportunity to respond. We've been smoke signaling. During Katrina, there's a form of Twitter. It was low tech. There was no Wi-Fi. There was no internet. But they would spray paint a house, and they'd send a message. It would be very short. I've cleared the house. There's no one inside. Move on. This house is uninhabitable, or there's two bodies inside, so we need somebody to come. In other words, they were tweeting messages. And hobos have been doing this 
since the beginning of hoboness, however long that's been. But they would actually chalk so that if you coming through a village and you saw the sheriff's an angry guy, keep moving. Or there's work here, they'll feed you. You can, you know, so there were all sorts of messages. Dog in the garden, um, a fence lives here, may get money here. Danger, danger, danger. So you see, we have been communicating like this with short messages for the larger crowd. I know that's trivia. You know where the word trivia came from? Trivia, three roads. When in the old days of traveling to the east, you'd, uh, when you came to crossroads, you'd leave small bits of, of news. Trivia, small bits of news. And so you see, we've been doing this since the beginning of time. Why then it's turned into, let me tell you what I had for dinner. It's a shame, but we're here to change that, right? So let's talk about improving our clout score. I'll give you three strategies. And here's the three strategies for improving your clout. The first one is sign up with clout. You don't have to, by the way. I mean, you have a clout score regardless. And it's visible regardless if you sign up. But if you sign up, they'll help you. They'll ask you, what are you interested in? I said USC, UCLA. Northridge, Cal State LA, Fullerton. That's the Tux team. And by the way, the Tux team is the technology and user experience team for the Department of Neighborhood Empowerment. So we've got Savak, Aaron, Michelle, Diana, and Jose. Oh, there you are. <laughs> Where's Jose hiding? Whoa, right here. So uh, it's our job to help you uh, connect. And so that's our uh, opportunity. And we'd love to get you Tux certified in a lot of different platforms. So today we're just talking about a couple of them. The first one is clout. If you sign up, it'll ask you, what are your interests? I put bicycling. I put activism. I put design. I put government. Um, and it'll start giving me articles from around the world or the country or LA, if I were to filter it that way. Wow, it's helping me navigate. And then these are things that I can share. And you want to know how easy it is to share? Oh, it's a button that says share. And I can share it on whichever platform I'd like to share it on. Then you'll think, oh my gosh, he's so well read. Every day he has a fascinating article from some great source on these great topics. Okay? So the ratepayers advocate who's sitting here might think, well, how about energy, right? Municipal governance, uh, uh, water. Wa who's in favor of water? Yeah. Anyone? Love and water. Um, you are? It's a great thing. It really is. So you could start filtering according to the topics. And we would start to trust you as that source. They're not in my network. They're not in my network's network. But is this you? What's your name? Jessica. Jessica. Oh, Jessica. At last we meet. See how that face-to-face -face works? Huh? Jessica, you've been... You're all, you were all over that this morning, huh? Yeah, tweeting away. So seriously, just follow Jessica, and <laughs> we can just go have lunch now. Yep. What's your neighbor council? Uh, Igor. Oh, Igor Rock. Igor Rock's doing some great work. So what will happen is I'll track this hashtag, which is NC Congress LA, and I will go follow all these people because we have a, a, a common interest. So I find folks all the time because um, of a common interest. And then I also find folks that are talking about me to um, get some content to share with folks. Let's try one more. Ooh, this is busy. Now, this is called Hootsuite. Hootsuite is an opportunity to aggregate your uh, social media platforms so that you can keep an eye on what's going on. Okay, And in this particular case, um, the whole world's getting fuzzy for me, so I don't know when things are out of focus or if it's just my vision. But um, we have a couple, we're tracking Neighborhood Con Congress LA, so I'm tracking the conversation today. These are people I don't know. They're not in my network. They're not in my network's network. But is this you? What's your name? Jessica. Jessica. I'll follow you now. Oh, Jessica, at last we meet. See how that face to face works? Huh? Jessica, you've been, you're all, you were all over that this morning, huh? Yeah, tweeting away. So seriously, just follow Jessica and 
we can just go have lunch now. Yep. What's your neighbor council? Uh, Eagle Rock. Igor, oh, Eagle Rock. Eagle Rock's doing some great work. So what will happen is I'll track this hashtag, which is NC Congress LA, and I will go follow all these people because we have a, a, a common interest. So I find folks all the time because um, of a common interest. And then I also find folks that are talking about me. <laughs> but seriously, you should. Anytime anyone talks about your neighbor council, go get them. They're already talking. They're talking about the intersection. They're talking about Chatsworth. They're talking about uh, uh, land use issue. They're talking about what's going on. Go get them. Uh, LA mayor, you know? Let's find out who else is already engaged. Now, this one was uh, upset about a pothole. They went straight to the mayor. Well, you know what? That might be my neighborhood. Let's get, if they care enough to speak up, go get them, right? And uh, my, treats, we, my tweets retweeted. I want to know who's paying attention and following, and I want to get them in that conversation and start it going. So you see, you can monitor a lot of things. This is all Twitter, but you can monitor Facebook and other platforms. And this is called Hootsuite. There are many. This is just one of them. They'll probably get bought by somebody, and it'll be something else. Just about the time I master things, <laughs> Microsoft buys them uh, and changes the name. But the thing is that there are many tools out there. The point is to aggregate in some way. Otherwise, you've got to go look at your website, then look at your blog stats, then you've got to go look on your constant contact or your MailChimp. Oh, we just went over 2,000. Should we switch to another platform? So life starts to get complicated with all these devices. Can you imagine how easy it was if we just carried chalk like the hobos? <laughs> Danger. But um, it's yeah, actually. It, <laughs> it does. Um, but this is actually a cool time because there's lots of opportunities for us to simplify and be more effective. The point is to aggregate. So here's uh, one key statistic. It's called the 80-20 rule. If you're making some noise and you spent, can you imagine a presentation where the whole presentation was introduction? Hi, my name's Stephen Bach. I'll just tell you. I just never got into it. The 80-20 rules like that. 80% of the time you should talk about other people. Only 20 of it should be the call to action. Only 20 of it should be the, hey, look at me. Only 20 of it should be the, you know, Van Nuys having the, the event, right? But the other 80 should be about what else is going on in the neighborhood. Okay, so I'll talk about what you're doing in Eagle Rock. And they're doing some cool stuff. I'll, when I get their newsletter, I'll push it out so you can see a great newsletter. Okay? So when mine comes, you consider me a trusted source because, after all, I've given you 80% of my stuff is quality content from people that you enjoy meeting. So when I get around to call, that call to action, whether it's the, the drums or the pipes or the trash can lid, you're going to trust me that you're getting good information, that this is a good source. So the thing here is that the absolute minimum, you can be a spectator and you won't have a very good clout. You can, you can do Hootsuite and just watch other people all day long. But if you really want your clout score to go up, you're going to have to have that conversation going on. So this is Hootsuite. This is an exciting slide of the back end. Do we have a front end of, of the, the back end of Nation Builder? So we have a Nation Builder account. We've got, uh, how many people are in, in the Nation Builder account? Where's Savak? I think it's 1.9 registered voters in the, Isaias is here from the city clerk's office. How many registered voters in the city of LA? 1.4 million? Isaias knows them, their names. He's uh, actually memorized them all. <laughs> but we have the registered voter data, and of the 1.4 million, about 300,000 have email accounts. That's kind of cool. You're not going to find them on Hootsuite. They're not following you on Twitter, but they have an email account and we can get it for you. Then you can email them. So divide 300,000 by 95, and that's about how many, it varies according to demographics, that's about how many folks you can get through Nation Builder. Here's the cool thing about Nation Builder. Where's Jessica? Hello. Diversity advocate and proud Red Sox fan. This year she's always okay, she's rethinking. <laughs> There's always next year. On Nation Builder, when you open your subnation, when there's activity, this will track the, the activity out there. It'll let you know your clout score. Plus, it'll do more than just show you Jessica's tweet, which I appreciate.
but it'll also let me know about you, your prospect, and it's voter registration data too, so there's a little bit more. It's public information. It's what politicians use during a campaign. They use voter registration data. So what this will do, let's go back one slide. What this will do is tell you who's, who just commented. I can follow them. I can tweet them right back. You can manage your social media for when, from within a nation builder subnation. There's Jessica. She's a prospect. I can assign Jessica to somebody who then is responsible for following up on all the people that had public safety interests, transportation interests, land use interests, water interests. So you can track data based on how they participated. Um, so when people like a Facebook post, when people tweet, retweet, there's assembly member Bloom is a prospect. So you even find out who's paying attention and have opportunities to assign them to somebody, to respond, to email them. I could email you from within this application. Um, this particular phone number is within this application. You can assign different roles to people within your council so that different people have accesses to different things. You can assign them people and roles and opportunities to communicate. You can create lists like today. I'll have a list of everyone who responded to this phone number. So I'm going to respond to you, not 1.4 million people. The thing with newsletters is you do them, you do them again, they're not getting open because you're sending it to everyone all the time everywhere and talking about everything. This helps you to be very focused in your communications so that you're actually uh, talking to the people that want to hear what you're saying on that particular topic. Next one. Uh, let's go back one. So let's go, I'm sorry, let's go back the other way. So it's, uh, here's 30 people out of 1.9 million people in the Our Nation Builder account. So we also have some county because keep in mind, uh, people and issues don't always stay within boundaries, so a lot of LA County is part of our family, so to speak. In other words, they've engaged with the neighborhood councils. Let's go back, uh, back one, Jose. Now, 17,000 are the ones that are in our network, but there's many people that aren't in the network. Um, now, Jessica would be in because she's on a neighborhood council board. I can sign up volunteers here. I can give them assignments on topics. Let's go. I can text people. Is Savak here? Do you want to fire us up? Oh, do we have any questions coming up on the queue? Can you switch to the other queue? So this is Nation Builder. It's a website, which means if you want to use it as a website, you can use it as the front end. When they when they enter your uh, VeniceNeighborCouncil.org, they would land on a on a uh, Nation Builder website page. Okay, it's also um, an opportunity to send newsletters like Constant Contact or MailChimp. Constant Contact you pay for, MailChimp is free to 2,000 and then you pay for it. But this is in an integrated platform. It's also an opportunity to send surveys and when people respond to the survey, if you sign up for the mayor's newsletter on the mayor's website, it's on a Nation Builder platform and he loves to send questions. How many people here like the river? That'll be a question. Click. Would you like to see it improved? No, of course not. Of course I would. But anyone that clicks, you know now, wants to engage, and you can draw them in. So uh, there was the shopping bag design contest. There was the river. Like if you think about the topics, he doesn't just talk. He asks what you want. When you click, now you're engaged, which means that there's probably another communication that goes out. And so it does surveys uh, also. You can, uh, does any, any of the neighbor councils have phones? Someone mentioned phones. Phone numbers. Now you can have a Google Voice, which is free. Here you get, it, it comes with a phone number, which means when people dial that number, it can go to whomever you want those uh, text messages or messages to go to. But you can also use that number then for people to text in, and you can also push messages to the phone numbers in the database. So it's kind of got, and it also is an opportunity to aggregate your social media and to aggregate other people's social media. So there's Assembly Member Bloom from the West Side, representing, is he representing Palms, Eli? Assembly Member Bloom? 
Oh, Santa Monica's farther over. So you would probably want to find out, out of all this data, who's yours. One really cool uh, feature of this particular application is you can take a map. And in Eagle Rock, you were working on the Colorado Boulevard. Bike lanes, revitalization, economic interest. Why aren't the restaurants open past 8.59? Well, maybe, you don't, maybe people don't want them open. How are you going to find out? What you can do is take... Uh, the map and just draw a little box around Colorado Boulevard, two blocks on either distance, and then you can send an email to all those people. It's like two clicks. I exaggerate, it's probably more. But you would then, that's called turf cutting. And you would just get the addresses, email addresses, direct mail addresses, phone numbers, however you'd like to interact with them. You could even assign it to a volunteer just to do one-on-ones with them but at least print out the sheet so that you know who you're talking to as you give walking sheets to people in your neighborhood. So that's called turf cutting, and it's an opportunity to take a city of 4 million people and a county of 10 million people and reduce it to who actually is interested in how late businesses are open on Colorado Boulevard. Let's go to the residents on either side. That's called turf cutting. It's also within the same application, which means that if you do some work with those, you can now create a list and follow up with specific newsletters, um, specific volunteers. So it's not a separate entity. Um, so that's Nation Builder. And so you're probably thinking next steps. So I just want to recap real quick. Uh, we live in a land where it matters. Metrics matter. I assure you, they matter to you. Whether or not you think they do, they matter. The second thing is that there's... Uh, there's many ways to measure lots of things. And one simple, really simple way to measure it and to move on is just to track your clout score. They did that experiment where they just started tracking. Uh, they picked a number in a factory. They just picked anything and just started posting it with no editorial. And things improved. They picked another number. Why? Because when you watch, people improve things on their own. I mean, th if you measure things, it'll just start to the needle. Am I, let's ask the scholar. Am I telling the truth, Dr. Cooper? Cam, am I telling the truth? Yeah? So. Uh, so pick a number, and you can pick whatever you want. Is it the number of people that show up at your meeting? Is it the number of community impact statements you file? Is it the number of people that open your newsletters? Whatever you pick, start, and then monitor it, and then record your, re report your performance. But this one's clout. It's kind of an aggregator. and It means that you can assign uh, lots of folks a role. Pick three things that you're good at yourself. I mean, don't try to do all 16 platforms and exhaust yourself. Eagle Rock does a great newsletter. Some folks have a great website. Others love to do surveys all day long. Van Nuys is doing great public events, and so you're doing great work with your newsletter, which goes out citywide, inviting folks. So he's got people jumping the boundaries. Imagine that, huh? Imagine when people from other neighborhoods are coming to your neighborhood council meetings. And that's kind of cool. And it's, they got a cool location. They're right there at the crossroads of, I don't know, City Hall and state and federal, all in that area. So, you know, it's, it's kind of a hub. Well, why not? Why not be that neighborhood council? So whatever your voice is, pick it. Here's the bottom line. Have a policy. Your neighbor council needs to get together and decide what that policy is so there's no debates and arguments and feuding going on. Number two, get a voice. Eagle Rock's got a great voice. I, I love um, the newsletters. I do. They have a great, consistent voice. But you can't be the comedian on Monday, the cynic on Tuesday, the critic on Friday, but the visionary on Wednesday and Thursday, and then come back and be philosophical and confusing on the weekend. Like, pick a voice for your neighborhood council so that we're all speaking with the same voice. And the third thing is to track your performance. Find a mechanism for tracking your performance. So if you'd like some more information about Nation Builder, let's go back, and setting up a sub-nation, just need to let us know. All you gotta do is tweet, I want in. Beep. And uh, to the uh, Tux Boot Camp, and we'll follow up with you. What do we got? Yes. So the question is from Panorama City Neighborhood Council is all the mass emailing as well as text included in Nation Builder? Well, there's a cost for everything. Things that are free have a cost. 
I mean, it might be time, it might be effort. Um, MailChimp is free to a certain point. Nation Builder is free for a couple of months to you to play with it if you like it. You'll need to decide. Uh, so it'd be $19 for your base. $19 is for up to 200 emails. And then it goes up accordingly. So we pay 60 for constant contact. It's based on volume. Um, you can get a Google Voice for free. And we use that during elections. Um, it, it, that's a separate device. In this particular case, the number is within it and it's free. The text pushes would have a cost. And if, and if you go to Nation Builder, because we're not Nation Builder, we're just telling you that we have an account. And if you'd like a subnation, you can come in on our account and use it for a couple of months. Um, you can do something called sandboxing, which is, which is just to experiment with your data and see what it looks like and how it feels. So I know Saul's interested, and we can open up a uh, opportunity for you. And then some folks want to become certified by Nation Builder, and that's cool. Um, you can't work for your own neighbor council, you know that, right? And if you're on the board of a neighbor council, you can't do work for hire for the neighbor council. But some folks work for other neighbor councils on their websites, on their social media, on their outreach strategies. There are folks that that's what they do. Just can't do it for your own neighbor council. So there are opportunities to get certified in different uh, platforms. We had a few folks that ended up going to work for Nextdoor. There are board members that had such a great time with it. They moved on and ended up working for Nextdoor as community organizers. Great, more power to them. There goes the local economy. Boom. So um, what's our next? So the yes, uh, it's included. And yes, there's a cost the more you bump it up. So if you pulled all of the voter registration data in LA County for your big 10 million person blast, it would cost you. Uh, so you don't want to carry unnecessary data. The thing about unnecessary data is my personal address book has grown over the years. I don't, you know, there are email addresses I know in there that are dead. And in terms of filtering and trimming, this has tools for trimming so that you're only carrying the data of those that are responsive, connected, engaged. So you can trim out all of the unnecessary data. And just communicate with those that need to hear what you want, what you've got to say. Uh, what's our next question? Uh, Eli, let me in. Which resources cost money? Which are free? Hootsuite's free. Clout's free. Google Voice is free. Uh, there are lots of free ones. The uh, department can provide discounts. Yes, because we have the data, and we can get you a subnation. And for two months, it'll be free. It'll be $19 minimum at that point if you want to continue and take off. That includes a website. So I don't know what you're paying for a website. That includes a newsletter. So I, I don't know what you're paying for constant contact. What do you guys use in Eagle Rock? It's at the, so it'll be at the bottom. It'll be MailChimp, uh, Vertical. There's, uh, there's several. But you typically pay based on the size. So this is 19 It includes all of that. And that's kind of, you're getting in a little cheaper. So in terms of economies of scale, yes, we have a pretty good deal with uh, nation builder and you're able to jump on that. Nothing beats face to face. EC West. EC West did a great job in the election. The election, they, they held a farmer's market and an election broke out in the middle of it. They had a parking, uh, they, they had a traffic jam. Um, people couldn't get to it. It was, it was huge. They had entertainment. It was, it was pretty cool. And where's EC West? Hey! So nothing beats face to face. You're absolutely true. At some point in time, the objective is to meet up Barack Obama <laughs> or Jessica or Eric Garcetti. But the, the, and, and what we just discovered here, this wasn't staged, was it? This, you're not a ringer, huh? Look at this. We met right here. But for a week now, we've been engaged in this neighborhood council promotion, right? Anyway, so I saw your tweets. I thought, how interesting. She's interested. I saw Red Sox. I said, okay. <laughs> Ooh. But... <laughs> But the thing is, keep in mind, it's the little things that you do on the internet that give people an impression, a first impression, a second impression, a third impression, and then an opportunity to engage in a large city. It's a pretty big city. It really is. It's also a small town, I assure you. And so I have great friends from all over the city. I meet them sometimes face to face, and there's nothing better than face to face. But the digital, I believe, supports and facilitates great face to face. Uh, any other questions coming up there? Let's try it. 
Did anyone text 213-634-1752? Who did? What happened? Is that exciting? It's a pretty cool document, too. It's on a platform called Issue, I-S-S-U-U. -S 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 it's a magazine created by Arn and Savak and, yeah? Huh? And the rest of the Tux team and Jose and Diana and Michelle. But it's, a, it's the Tux Guide, which means that if you do a newsletter, how, how do you get that newsletter out there? And when you send an email newsletter, I get them all the time. I can't find them in my email. But what happens is on issue, it's a, it's, it's a digital publisher. Does Sydney want to stay? It's a digital publisher. So you can start posting your documents. So Camden, when you do a, a report for, your, for the ratepayers advocate on the Department of Water and Power, the largest municipal authority in the United States of America, kind of a big deal, right? Um, in the pretty big budget, too. They have, it's like the Roman Empire, right? They have their boop. Anyway. <laughs> yeah. So when they, um, when they, when you do your report, you can host it on issue, which means that you can give it to people who just ask for it by dialing the number and saying, I want, you know, you know what I mean? That can be your push. Because if you email it, it's going to get pushed in my email inbox, and I got hundreds a day which means that it's way down there and I can't remember the keyword and then when I did water, everything came up because everyone's talking about water, so I need something better. So what we do is we, we post it on our website and we tweet that we post it. Yeah. We would love to be able to post it. Yeah, so, so these are tools that complement each other. Um, so what happens when you call 634-1751? Now when I call the people I work with, and by the way, there's a couple of people at Nation Builder that will come to your neighborhood council and work with you. And so when I call Andre on his uh, Nation Builder number, um, he'll get a text message automatically, but it can forward to other people. So you can set up your neighborhood council. For example, people call neighborhood councils all the time during the meeting because they're lost. I know that because they then call me. Okay? Well, the president can't answer the phone because he's pretty busy flogging Robert's Rules of Order. Right? And then the secretary can't answer his or her phone because, I say this because it happened just last week, because the secretary was busy using his cell phone to record the meeting. So you can have this set up so that it um, uh, goes to other, so it automatically sends a message to three people, which means that somebody can go open the door. And that's all it was, it was a locked door. Um, this morning, people doing the same thing here, uh, calling the 20th floor because they couldn't get in the building. Well, we're not. We're on the third floor. There's no phones to answer, right? But if you set up a, a, the messaging, so on the 213-634-1752, yeah, there's no operator waiting to help you, which is something to consider because those days are long gone, of having an office, and an answering machine, and someone that's going to work that phone, because the fact of the matter is, one thing that really drove me nuts about um, calling. 311 about the potholes is you have to do it when you don't have time to do it. Right? So late at night when I, oh, I'm still upset about that pothole. I'm going to call it in. No, I'm not. I'm not going to call it in. There's no one to take the call. Right? The Metro, which is a pretty big regional transportation authority, proudly reported to the board of directors that customers, customer complaints had gone down. I said, well, you reduced the customer service hours. Oh, well, yeah, well, that's true, too. So then they had to adjust accordingly how many you're getting per hour, and, of course, they'd gone up. So the thing here is that those, those days are long gone of a 9 to 5 customer service, and for a neighbor council, that's just impossible. But in this particular case, if you do have someone manning a, a desk, they can quickly just uh, respond to any incoming calls, and that impresses the heck out of people when I call them right back. Oh, my gosh. I wasn't expecting a call. I just called to yell. Well, that's what's up. And so that alone sometimes I think is worth the price of admission. Do we have any more questions? Um, all right, let's try the face-to-face -face questions. Yeah. yeah? Yeah, I missed half the lecture trying to Twitter. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, this is, this is, now this is an interesting example. You don't have to be an expert at all things, but go find one. Right? And then I would well, capture... I got a message back in Arabic, by the way. Should I be concerned? Oh. <laughs> that's, that's not your phone. <laughs> no. Um,
<laughs> okay, Manuel. <laughs> I don't even know who this is. A 40404, who's that? I have no idea. Okay, man, he'll help you. Okay. Okay, so capture, capture an expert. Um, yes. What's that? How much does it cost if you have like a phone number? That comes with Nation Builder for two months, it's free, and then it'll be $19 a month. It includes everything the website, uh, the newsletters, um, the, the phone number. And that's the basic platform. I mean, all of that basic platform. And then from, from in there, you can manage your social media. This is international sign for managing your social media. I don't know if you knew that. Do you know that? <laughs> Check, please. Call me. Social media. Right? Yes, sir. Uh, with regards to turf cutting, do we have to first input their actual location, or does the, the website, or, or does uh... No, it's, there's a map on the back end. There's a map, and you just draw it and give it the commands, but it's, it, it has all the data, okay? So whether or not you want to get involved, just so you know, the city clerk's here, right? He can tell you whether or not you're paying attention, somebody is. And so if you go to Norwalk, which is the, the county seat for the, uh, is it the county election? It's where all the data is kept. So anyone that's done anything anywhere, apparently there's a database. But there's, uh, there's a few different uh, strategies. One is based on um, residents. So next door is anyone that, ha that you know, is a, it's, it's properties. Uh, then there's voter registration data. So there are data sets. We live in big data land. We just had a, we just hired, the city of LA just hired a chief data officer. Cool. What's that? But we, we're getting lots of data. Four billion dollar budget for water and power. That's a, that's a lot of data. The LADOT, street services, lots of data. So in this particular case, there's a lot of data at your fingertips. We're going to narrow it down just to a couple of things, which is you want to talk to the people in your neighborhood. You want to find them specifically. So to answer your question, all you got to do is draw. It could be a, a square. It could be around a school. It could be around an intersection. It could be a street. Draw the map, and you'll get the data of the people that live there. Now, do you want just emails? Right? Do you want just those with phone numbers? Do you want to do direct mail and do postcards? Or do you want to do walking sheets? Do you want to print them all and then knock on doors? Because they may have registered a vote in 1960, which means they won't have an email, right? They've got a rotary phone. You're not going to text them. So that, but a walking sheet would still apply there, or a postcard. So that's a choice. I hope that answered your question, because I got all of, yes. Do you have another one? We missed one. Well, it's an ongoing. I mean, I think that um, I don't remember what our what our um, I don't remember what our two years. I mean, two years. It's been a regular and consistent thing. So we've been trying to uh, increase the number of people that are in our immediate seventeen thousand now face-to-face -face contacts that we've had, and those are all literally face-to-face. -face. Like we've met people at an election they voted. At a meeting, they showed up, 1,764 board members. Those 17,000 uh, are, th that was built up from real life experiences. The other platforms were built up from activity, like the 50, from 47 to 50. It's just because we just keep chipping away at it. But if you were popping a point a week, at the end of the year, look where you are. I mean, at the end of the year, you'd be up there with, the mayor's a 66, right? So, you know, and if you start off now with a 20 and you just, slowly but surely making some noise, it'll happen quite quickly. So for us, we, saw, we see a steady increase, and it's a metric that we've been reporting for a year, and we've gone up every week. So uh, we, we also measure against last year, and everything's dramatically up. Sometimes way dramatically. Other times, you know, there was an issue in that month or this month, so you'll see spikes. But overall, it's a fairly significant increase. So how's it been doing? I should have had a metric for that answer, huh? Seven. Million. So Eli, did you, did you have a question? Oh, yes. Did, did you? Will the Tux team come out to give an in-service? In huh? Is it coming? Yeah, sure, but let me get this question first. Uh, ask your questions regarding digital presence. Will the Tux team come out to give an in-service? Mission Hills. Will the Tux team come to Mission Hills? Yes. So if you'd like uh, the Tux team to come and do a workshop, uh, maybe for the region, if you'd like Nation Builder specifically or Nextdoor specifically to send an organizer, 
They will. So we just need to know what you know, uh, what, what you need. And if you'd like to become involved and join the Tux team, like everybody has a special power, right? Isaias, what's your superhero power? Operations. Operations. The city clerk. Keeping the city going, right? But they serve as the mayor. They serve as the city council. They handle all of the council files. Um, in addition, elections for, for business improvement districts to municipal elections, right? So they're always churning in this administration. Uh, so everyone has a special power. Yes. Yes. Uh, my special power is asking off-topic questions. Yes. So uh, <laughs> this has to do with technology pieces and how we can become more efficient, but not necessarily for outreach. Okay. So as you may or may not have heard, there might be a couple of pieces of paper involved with doing our job at the board level yes. for requesting funding, that type of thing. So we've developed a system, and uh, a few of us have iPads, and we have all the PDFs layered out so we can layer in text and do digital signatures and capture uh, board vote counts and then email, boom. So Overachievers. Before we, leave, before we leave the thing, yeah. paperwork's filed. What are, or what do you think the feasibility would be of setting up a Dropbox, uh, either on your end or our end, so it's a Power LA backslash Mar Vista, there's our Dropbox. Every piece of paper that we generate, every yep. community impact statement, everything you need to drive to us, it's all in one place. Because I've heard so many stories of, well, I took this packet of paper and yep. I gave it to somebody, yeah. and now all the paperwork is lost. Yeah. Oh, my God. Well, I think that's a genius suggestion. Well, it's almost. If it was tweeted, it would have been a genius suggestion. Oh! <laughs> but if you go downstairs to the third floor, the rotunda, and look at the... What? Is that how it's said? No, but the Oh, yeah, that's the international sign. If you ever lose your rotunda in a foreign country. <laughs> Hobos started that. So if you go downstairs to the third floor and you look at the camera at our booth, that photo gets taken and it goes to a drop box. Oh, my gosh, great minds, huh? Well, okay, it wasn't my mind. It was the box. And it goes to a drop box on our hard drive. No, it's not on our hard drive. It's on the cloud. Um, but it's our Dropbox account, you, get even, you can even see you know, what you sent, right? That's an example of what you're talking about. Yes? Yeah. I think it's a great idea. Look, let's go get the mayor right now. We just... Well, huh? I'll build it on my end and start using okay. it and dropping stuff. If you guys can have your people start loading in on your end. Oh, your people and my in people the middle. are involved. And then whoever needs access, <laughs> yeah. oh, that's not my department. If that's finance, oh, well, finance can look in there. <laughs> so, and then whoever else can look in. This is access? Okay. So Savak uh, and Aaron and Jose can make that happen, and they'll work with you. That's a great idea. Uh, by the way, the, the best ideas come sometimes, like all the time, from outside. The system. Yes. From I wanted to show an example of how social media can be used for good customer service. Okay. Um, so this was a conversation on Thursday night, rather late, I think about eight o'clock at night. Somebody in the neighborhood, DWP nine zero three four, that's our uh, zip code, is out. DWP crews working on it. Palms neighborhood council. Do you have an estimated time that will be back up? DWP crews working on now estimated repair to ten to twelve hours. A cruise will usually beat that hang in there when you get back to you ASAP. And then the final tweet, which isn't there, is from the woman who tweeted originally, Palms is back up. So cool, cool. There you go. So there you go. So that's a way that you can use uh, social media to improve customer service and uh, deal with issues like outages, power outages. And a lot of these are on there. I, one time I didn't get my uh, ballot in the mail for uh, uh, vote by mail. And I tweeted Dean Logan, the, city, the county clerk, and he emailed me uh, three hours That's later. Cool. And that next day, I had my I had a ballot that was hand delivered to my That's cool. my place. So yeah, social media is a way to get better customer service. Yeah. That's cool. So Jessica, come on up here. Yeah. So because Jessica was our most prolific tweeter, we have something for Jessica. Come on over here. Come on over here. Don't be afraid. And it's not only a water bottle, it's filled with LA's water, refrigerated. <laughs> now I want you all to take a photo, and I want you to tweet it. <laughs> What's the hashtag? NC Congress LA. There you go. Tux Boot Camp. Tux Boot Camp. Your people are stupid.